Well, my last video talked about uh, analog scope bandwidth considerations, uh, even if you're doing uh, you know, low frequency audio work and why it might be nice to have more bandwidth than you think you need. We played with this uh, little uh, phase shift oscillator circuit here. I corrected the schematic in my previous video. I missed, I'd redrawn the schematic incorrectly, so I had the 200K resistor up here. So I put it down here where it, where it actually is and where I built the circuit. Um, the circuit was intentionally built with, uh, you know, kind of a poor layout and poor component choice uh, here on this little uh, breadboard. These things are really bad for adding a lot of, you know, stray capacitance to your circuits and uh, coupling, you know, from one node to another and inductance and things like that. They're not great for anything that has a potential for doing anything high speed. But we did that intentionally to show, you know, that sometimes, you know, what look like pretty simple benign circuits can do some weird things at high frequency. And we showed that uh, when we probed uh, the base uh, here at the in this oscillator, phase shift oscillator that uh, we saw some oscillation um, that was kind of busting out that uh, when you had the scope set to a narrow bandwidth you didn't see. Uh, and then if you open up the bandwidth you did see it. Uh, there were a couple of questions that I had uh, that the video raised and what, two, one of them was really what happens with a digital scope and uh, what considerations do you have there. So we're going to talk about that. But the other question real quick that I had was, uh, well, you know, did the fact that I put the probe, you know, on this node add enough capacitance to cause the oscillation in the first place, meaning, you know, does the oscillation go away if I remove the probe? And the way to kind of see that is uh, rather than probing here, let's probe at the collector, okay? And if I look over at the collector voltage, I can kind of see it right here, okay? And that's with the bandwidth limit off and with the bandwidth limit on. And if you look really carefully down here in the corner, Okay, you can see a little fattening of the trace and say, well, gee, is that that same oscillation? And we can find that out. I can just kind of zoom in kind of vertically here and kind of see what that looks like if I you know, kind of uh, turn the bandwidth limit on or off. But then if we uh, kind of zoom in horizontally, kind of the same uh, deal we were doing before. Let me kind of uh, scoot this down here and move my delay over. Okay. And let's see, I just need to adjust the trigger position here a little bit. And let's turn the bandwidth limit off. And uh, so now I can actually see that band kind of being lit up here. And I can kind of see it here if we zoom in a little bit further. Yeah, lo and behold, there's the oscillation. It's still there. So at that same 5 nanoseconds per division, we're still seeing that same about 200 megahertz oscillation. So it uh, it really is there. Uh, it You know, it's... It's not due to me probing, but that is something that you definitely got to be, uh, you know, cognizant of. Is that sometimes adding a probe to your circuit can, you know, add, you know, add capacitance and loading and things like that that can upset the performance of the circuit. In this case, that wasn't the case, but uh, but it was a good question. So uh, there's the answer to that one there. So let's take a look at uh, on a digital side of things uh, what's going on. So I'm going to take take off my old uh, analog scope here. And I'm going to grab the probe for my digital scope. Uh, this is a uh, also a Tektronix uh, scope. This is a, a TDS uh, 2014. Okay, this TDS 2014 is a four-channel, 100 megahertz, uh, one giga sample per second scope. So you might say, well, I probably got enough sample rate to look at this thing, but 100 megahertz isn't enough bandwidth. Well, the reality is you still can see it. Um, one thing to remember with uh, when you think about scope bandwidth um, considerations is that um, you know if you've got a 100 megahertz scope or a 350 megahertz scope or a 20 megahertz scope, it doesn't mean that you can't see signals above that. It just means that they're going to be reduced in amplitude. So you know, so the fact that we know this circuit's oscillating at about 200 megahertz doesn't mean we can't see it. Um, you know, certainly we can, it just may not be at the full amplitude, but in this case we don't really care too much that that's the case, but so we're looking at that same, you know, node there, and if we do the same trick, you know, for example, if this was set to, uh, oops, turn that on, if this was set to, say, a 20 megahertz bandwidth, that, that looks like what we looked at uh, on the other video, um, you know, it doesn't look like there's any particular problem, but we look at the full bandwidth here, and uh, we can kind of see that. Now, uh, this scope doesn't have that, that dual delayed time base that we had on the old analog scope where I can you know, pick a region and set up a new sweep, but it does have, you know, in the horizontal mode here, 
um, a way of setting up a window to look at and then uh, and then just be able to look at that window so so I can set this window up and it brings up an area that I can define the width of that by uh, kind of adjusting uh, my knob here let me turn let me go back to my main here knock that back here and I can set up a window and if I can make this narrower and narrower and I can go down to about that same look down the bottom down to about that same five nanoseconds per division and where I've got it positioned right here so then I could say rather than display what I'm looking at here let's display the window okay and I can see the signal there it's free running because I'm triggering on that that slower signal I'm not triggering on this and that's one of the advantages of the old analog dual delayed delayed sweep is that the second sweep you could trigger on something separate and I had actually triggered on this high frequency signal but with the digital scope the easiest thing is just to hit a single sequence and then it stops and there's our signal that oscillation that's buried inside of that thing I can't see them both at the same time like I could on the analog one on this on this scope but you can see it okay and if we look we're at five nanoseconds per division I've got about a five nanosecond period you know here in fact I could put cursors up there and turn, put the time cursors on and we can kind of roll this around and say yep there's a peak there we'll go over here there's a peak there and if we look my uh, delta is about 5.6 nanoseconds 170 180 megahertz I didn't do a real careful measurement but that's that indeed tells me that uh, I do have that oscillation there so yeah so we can see it um, you know, even on a 100 megahertz uh, digital scope here but the way you kind of zoom in to look at it is a little bit differently or a little bit different um, so that's an example of kind of a, who I would call kind of more of an entry-level uh, analog scope this one is uh, you know relatively you know older technology by today's standards but uh, it's pretty common uh, that you'd find a scope like this and certainly that could be used to look for the same type of issue that we're seeing with the simple analog circuit. So I'm going to remove this probe and let's look at a little bit more advanced scope here. This is a, a 4000 series uh, scope. This happens to be the new uh, mixed domain oscilloscope, the MDO. But essentially from an analog scope standpoint it's a 4 channel 1 gigahertz scope running at uh, 5 giga sample per second. So if we uh, Hook this probe up here. Let's uh, kind of hook my ground up here and hook the probe up to the same base node we've been looking at. Okay, so now I can see on this screen, okay, I've got that same kind of ugly looking thing, but I got this weird little banding going on. Now, one thing to think about with some of these uh, more advanced scopes is we've got a little bit more flexibility in terms of things like, you know, we've got a lot more resolution on the screen. We got more flexibility in terms of sample rate. And if I look right down, right down here, I'm looking at uh, 100 microseconds per division, but the the scope is by default is using just 10,000 points, so it's only running at 10 mega samples per second. So I'm pretty much undersampling that high frequency oscillation. And the way we can get around that is by just changing the number of points that we're using here. Okay. So if I hit the uh, acquire button on the scope, I can change uh, record length from 10,000. Let's, not, let's bring that from 10,000 down to say like 100,000 or even a million points. And if I look down at the display now, I've got a million, million points. So now that the, the scope is really sampling at one giga sample per second. So sufficiently oversampling that oscillation. And now in, in the waveform here, I can see that uh, you know, I don't have any of that kind of weird banding going on. Okay. And then once we've got this, it's very easy to zoom in. Uh, this scope has got this really neat feature called a wave inspector. What I'll do is I'll just do a, a quick single acquisition, so I've, I've got an acquisition here in memory. And then by just rotating this knob, I can change the, the zoom level. You see, once I did that once, you see these brackets here, okay? So now as I ro keep rotating this knob, those brackets get narrower and narrower and closer and closer together. And now I'm zooming in finer and finer and finer into that particular signal, okay? So now I can actually see there's my signal if I look down here. Uh, let's see, my zoom window is at 10 nanoseconds per division, okay, and now I can actually see, you know, there I am, it's about a half a division, so there's my same 5 nanoseconds, that same 200 megahertz oscillation, okay. So there's, there's way, ways to do this with both the digital scopes as well as the analog scopes, and um, uh, it just is a matter of, you know, being cognizant of what you're doing with, uh, you know, your sample rate, your record length. And what you would have to do in the scope, whether it's to set up a new, you know, horizontal uh, acquisition, uh, you know, kind of set up here, like we did here using kind of a window, or going in and zooming in on a longer acquisition and ensuring you've got enough sample rate, 
or on the old analog scope it really came down to playing around with the uh, dual delay time base and triggering appropriately on the other signal. So uh, anyway, I hope that answers some of the viewer questions that I had on this simple little uh, analog phase shifter circuit, or excuse me, phase shift oscillator circuit, and uh, and different ways of looking at uh, these you know, high frequency problems you can get uh, and uh, with both analog and digital scopes. So uh, enjoy.